Now that we understand that our spine is the stable base of our body, let's move forward and talk about force production. Now, primary force production in our body is accomplished with the legs. I like to joke that we walk around on our legs, not our hands. Naturally, that's gonna be our next stop on this biomechanical journey. So let's talk a little bit about how we optimize the lower extremity and how we keep our hips, knees, and ankles nice, nice and safe as we lift. As I just alluded to, the leg is made up of three joints primarily, the hips, the knees, and the ankles. The long and short of it is the hip is this massive, robust joint, has a whole lot of connective tissue holding it together. That is a joint that is optimal for load bearing. Our hip is very good at holding weight and keeping structural inte integrity under load. Our knees and our ankles can handle load. They're just a little less optimal for doing so. So what I want you to understand about how our lower body works is our hip should always be the primarily loaded joint with our knees and our ankles acting secondarily. Let's talk a little bit about the practical implications of that and how we load our hips versus our knees and our ankles. So we want our hips loaded primarily. How do we actually go about doing that? To learn this, we're gonna utilize a concept called load sequencing. And load sequencing simply means whatever joint we move first is the joint that's gonna take on the primary load. So if I'm doing a lower body exercise and I initiate that exercise by driving my hips back, they will be the primarily loaded structure. Conversely, if I start that same exact exercise, but initiate it with my knees driving forward, my knees will be the primary loaded structure. In this way, we want to initiate every lower body exercise we do by driving our hips back to load them. We never want to start a movement by driving our knees forward and loading them instead. So let's do a little practical drill to feel what it's like to load our hips versus our knees. So standing up, we're going to be in a locked out position. And remember, the whole idea is just whatever joint we move first is the one that's going to be primarily loaded. So to load our hips and move them first, all we're going to do, we're going to drive them back. You'll notice that as soon as you drive your hips back, you feel your butt, you feel your hamstrings, and you feel tension at the top of your leg. That is what our, it feels like to have our hips loaded. Now, let's do it the wrong way. Standing up, instead of driving the hips back, I want you to push the knees forward. You're gonna see that you feel your kneecaps in the front of your knees. That is being knee loaded. We wanna try to avoid that. Now, just to drive home the point a little bit more, let's get knee loaded and then try to recover into a good position, i.e. drive our hips back. You're gonna notice you still feel pressure in your knees. This is the whole idea. If we initiate with our hips, our hips will be loaded throughout the movement. If we initiate with our knees, there's not really anything we can do to regain that. So all of this taken together, any exercise that we do, we wanna make sure that we are initiating with the hips back as opposed to the knees forward, whether it's a squat, whether it's a lunge, whether it is a single leg hinge, you'll notice each and every time I'm initiating with that hip back so the bigger, stronger joint is loaded. Now we understand that the optimal joint position for our legs is loading our hips primarily over our knees. We wanna make sure that all of our lower body exercises start by driving the hip back instead of driving the knee forward. Now let's take the next step. Let's start talking about the muscles that we should use at the hip to optimize force production. The same way that our leg has three primary joints, our hip has three primary muscle groups that act upon it. The hamstrings, the quads, and the gluteals. The idea behind optimal muscle activation in the legs is that the glutes are a big, powerful muscle. They have a very advantaged line of pull on our femur. They are a set of muscles that are awesome at creating force. The hamstrings and quads, yes, they generate force, but they're a little bit longer, stringier muscles. They're a little less mechanically advantaged. So when we lift using our legs, we want to make sure that our glutes are creating primary force production with our quads and hamstrings helping out secondarily. The same way that our hip is dominant over our knee and ankle and load bearing, our glutes should be dominant over our hamstrings and quads and force production. So we want our glutes to be primary force generators. The problem is the ample sitting that most of us do in everyday life leads our glutes to turn off, which in turn leads our quads and our hamstrings to become dominant. It's the reason most of us have tight hip flexors and hamstrings. They're not tight just because they're tight. They're tight because your glute isn't working hard enough so your quads and your hamstrings have to work harder. As we get our glutes stronger, we should see that our quads and hamstrings get a little less tight. They kind of release a little bit. This is all to say, 
it is hard for most people to feel their glutes. So let's discuss the cues that we use to ensure that we're using the back of our hip, our butt to drive force when we use our legs. As with all muscle activation patterns, there are conscious cues that we need to focus on to ensure our gluteals are contracting as we move. So let's cover them. Our first cue is gonna be, we wanna maintain weight in our heel. As soon as we start to get into our forefoot, we're gonna start to feel our quads and our hamstrings more. It's a little bit easier to feel our glutes contracting when we have weight in the back of our foot and our heel. Our second cue is, as we go through a range of motion squatting on our hip, we wanna push our knees as far outward as they can go without the big toe coming up off the ground. You'll notice if I push my big toe or my knee out too far, the big toe will lift up at a certain point. We wanna cut that range of motion right before that. I also don't want you to push your knee so far out that it is uncomfortable. If we feel like we're getting painful or twingy torque in our knee by pushing it out, let's limit that range of motion coming inward just to wherever it's comfortable. Now, you'll notice, when I combine those two cues, pushing my knees out with the big toe down and then keeping weight in my heel, you'll see that it raises our arch up off the ground. We will have pressure from our big toe through the ball of our foot to the outside of our foot to our heel. Like I said, this just optimizes our foot position. If we're using our glutes and we're using these cues properly, we should feel our arch lifted up off the ground, not collapsing inward. Finally, the last cue, the most arbitrary of the cues, but it really, really does work, is when we move out of our lower body, we wanna make sure that we are squeezing our butt the whole time. Listen to that carefully. I'm not just squeezing my butt to get to the top of a movement. I wanna make sure that I am also squeezing my butt on the way down to help stabilize the hip. So those are our three cues. One, keeping weight in the heel. Two, pushing the knees out without the big toes coming up off the ground and three, squeezing our butt consistently as we move out of our legs. Let's apply these cues practically to a glute bridge. To learn how to practically apply these cues, we're gonna use one of our most basic activation exercises, a glute bridge. So we'll be on the ground on our backs. We're gonna get our feet under us about four inches away from our butt. And then we're gonna make sure our feet are straight. I don't want them duck foot out. I wanna make sure they're nice and neutral. Starting out, we're gonna use cue number one. We'll keep weight in our heel throughout the entire movement. Number two, I'm gonna drive my knees as far out as they can go without the big toes coming up off the ground. You'll notice as you do that with weight in our heel, our arch rises up. We should feel that, that's a good sign that we're doing this correctly. Finally, we're gonna keep those two positions, weight in our heels, knees outward, and we're gonna put our hands on our butt. We're gonna use that arbitrary cue. We're gonna squeeze our butt to drive our pelvis up to the ceiling. My knee position and my heel pressure will stay consistent the whole time. You should feel rigidity on the back of your hip and then nice and slow, we'll keep that contraction and lower ourselves down. Keeping this contraction on the way down is the hard part. It's gonna feel like we basically are using our glutes as a handbrake to lower our pelvis down to the ground. We'll get another rep, knees out, weight in our heels, arches established. We'll squeeze our butt, feeling rigidity on the back of the hip, maintaining those positions. And then once again, the hard part, keeping our glutes squeezed as we let the pelvis lower down. I want you to try to get 10 repetitions of that just to get some sensation on the back of the hip to practically apply those cues. As always, it's us thinking about these cues as we move that keep us safe as we exercise. So the optimal biomechanics of the lower extremity are that we are loading our hips over our knees and that we are using our glutes to produce force primarily over our quads and our hamstrings. Let's take the next step and practically apply these mechanics to movement. We'll utilize the example of a bodyweight squat. So to learn how to practically integrate these mechanics with movement, we're gonna utilize a basic squat as an example. So we're gonna start with our feet about hip width apart and straight. Remember, we never want our feet duck foot. It's okay if our feet are turned out slightly. We can think kind of the zero to 15 degree range, whatever's nice and comfortable there. Now. Starting out, I wanna make sure that my butt is squeezed just so I have that initial contraction of my glutes. And then we're gonna load our hips first by driving them backwards, okay? Now, as soon as I start to get range of motion on my lower extremity, I am establishing my knees outward. So you'll notice my knees aren't collapsed. I'm actively pushing out, keeping my big toe down and my arch established. That's a consistent position throughout this entire movement. That's how we integrate that. Once my hips are behind my heels and they are loaded, we can start to integrate our knees secondarily. Once again, it's not that our knees can't be loaded, it's just that they're secondary to the hips. So now that my hip is loaded first, 
we can start to utilize the knees coming down into our squat. The whole time I'm keeping weight in my heel with my butt squeezed. And then finally, I'm gonna squeeze my butt to drive my pelvis up and through. Now, I know that's a lot to focus on, but as always, as we integrate these mechanics more and more, the more second nature they will become. As you can see, there's a lot of mental focus required to apply these lower body mechanics in addition to our spine mechanics. But I promise, as you use them more and more, they will become more natural and you will not have to focus on them nearly as much. The idea for lower body mechanics is we want to make sure that we are using our hips in every movement over our knees and that our gluteals, our butt is driving force with our hamstrings and quads acting secondarily. As often as we can apply those mechanics, the less our knees are going to hurt, the more optimal our lower body is going to function. Now, let's take the next stop onto the shoulders.